Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we are taking the Phoenix A320 service from London Gatwick over to uh, Reykjavik um, in Iceland. And uh, it is about a two hour and uh, actually a three hour f uh, flight. We're expecting three hours of flight time. Our departure time is 19.05, so we have got about 45 minutes um, to go here. And so. Let's get going. Aircraft is completely shut down for today. Mash switches are off, most like your normal uh, weather radar is all set so off and predicted wind shear system, wind shear system off. Left over idle. Gears down, wipers are off. Batteries at least 25 and a half. So one and two. And we can apply the external power. Alright, flight warning computers are loaded. Um, I'm just going to wait for the caution light or the uh, this indication to go away because that's not a normal indication. Um, it only happens. There we go. And we'll do the AP fire test. That checks out. Looks good. We'll set up our lighting as we desire. For now, we don't need anything. So I'm going to go and turn everything down. Um, there we go, keep this going, that's fine. And um, let's go to the EFB here. Let's get some things set up. So Phoenix, after import. There we go. We're expecting, let's see how many passengers are we expecting so we can estimate the time that it's going to take for us. Um, we're expecting 155 passengers, so probably going to take about 25 minutes to board, up to 30 minutes. Um, so we're going to consider that. Um, do we have, yes we do. Mass and balance, 155, here we go, that's good. Um, I'm gonna hit cancel, so 26 minutes. So in five minutes we'll start boarding. In five minutes we should be done with everything. Setting up the aircraft ready for the uh, passengers. So import everything here and we're gonna start with the ACARS initialization. So ATSU, AOC, flight init and init data request. That is checked. We go to data, aircraft status, verify the aircraft type, uh, engine type, nav database is up to date, and we're going to select negative 3.5% here. Boom. And we go to init and init request. And then our A cards is initialized. So if you guys are wondering what kind of procedures I'm following, I'm following Lufthansa procedures. Very simple. Uh, with a little bit of mix of my own. Um, the only thing that's really my own is, for example, like how I do my lights and stuff. And um, But the rest is pretty much all from um, official Lufthansa um, documentation. Um, so I try to go by as uh, by that. So we initialized ACARS, FMGC pre-initialization we've done as well. We now do the aircraft acceptance check. So we go here, recall, one to three seconds. Verify that nothing shows up. If it does, we need to check the logbook, enter that in, make sure that's uh, part of the MEL, so we're allowed to fly with that problem. If that problem does exist, um, make sure that maintenance knows about it already and it's everything okay. We'll check your operations engineering bulletin. Um, and that is the aircraft acceptance check complete. We do the preliminary performance determination. Um, do that by getting some weather. So we have the weather here, Gatwick 3. 10 at 11, cav okay, 20 degrees, 5, 2.5, kinetic 1024. Um, so if we hit B as a shortcut, 1024, it's down on all three. Perfect. We'll just head back here. Performance is a little bit low, unfortunately. Sorry about that. And what we do is we also pre calculate our performance as well. So uh, we're going to sync load sheet here. We're going to take runway 26 left, dry. Flaps optimum. We're probably going to need flaps to force Togo. No anti so off packs off. And we're going to sync live weather. Calculate. 
and the first officer would do the same thing and then we would cross check to see if the computed data is accurate and agree with one another and um, but we're not going to do that, we're not going to worry about that it's going with Slops 1 actually even but I'm pretty surprised because we are taking quite a bit of fuel today and uh, and we're pretty full, like we're pretty full when it comes to cabin with Slops 1 that's pretty pretty impressive that we can do that although we do have a fairly wrong runway and we would also clip some charts so let us clip some charts so I'm gonna get my real iPad out and we're gonna clip some charts real quick so pretty much just the departure but we're gonna pin that if it allows me to pin it there it goes and we're just gonna quickly read through the top so transition altitude to 6000 when instructed contact London control good to know with current altitude and initial clear altitude this so include noise also the SID designator, current altitude, initial clear altitude, SID include noise prefer preferential routes, cruising levels will be issued after takeoff, okay, do not climb above SID level, until instructed by ATC, crew shall request ATC clearance via SID, information from Gatwick delivery, aircraft do not request clearance to fly, SID will be issued with an RNAP1 SD, expect closing obstacles, wait first to detail dealing authority to be Echo Golf Tango Tango. Alright, routing, we can take the routing here, our initial climb is probably going to be 6000 because um, that's the max altitude for um, our SID so that's what we're planning with and the rest all looks good we're obviously going to have a closer look um, once we actually need to program the FMGC so open the charts uh, the rest of the charts that we need so we need some general charts actually I read out through all these now we're just going to read through the departure charts uh, in case something uh, looks to be important to us call delivery clearance 15 minutes prior to startup to allow for departure data to be processed so 15 minutes um, we're going to do ADC clearance but we'll try that with abatement departure procedures um, doesn't, like, doesn't look like we have any specific NADPs um, just uh, so we're going to go with NADP2 unless somewhere it is specified noise abatement we just looked at that and then here Nine period. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna go with NADP two. Uh, pin the airport charts, parking stands, and the INS coordinates for the parking stands. And that is checked for the return. So for the return, it's um, I believe the same runway. So two six left. I list me. So we have that there as well. All right. Charts are now pinned. and that would be the preliminary performance determination complete. We do an RVSM check, but because our IRSs are not aligned, we cannot do that just yet. So we're gonna skip that and wait until our IRSs are aligned. Um, before walk around checks, cockpit oxygen is checked. Product quantities are in the green and internal quantities, at least 9.5 quarts and three hours that would give us 1.5 quarts, but we needed um, quick mass, 12 quarts. Sorry, 11 quarts. <laughs> um, no, 12 quarts or 11 point. I'm stupid. <laughs> so 9.5 plus uh, one quart, 1 quart, 1.5 quarts since we're flying three hours, uh, that's 11 quarts. So 11 quarts for each engine, that's fine. So we don't need it. So we're good there as well. And of course, for the return, we would also, I guess, add another 1.5. We, we would like that we would have to do maintenance at a airport that is not our base, so to speak. So, you know, it's... That would be preferred. Okay, so the we also checked that our flap position here agrees with our physical levers, which it does. Boilers are disarmed, parking brake is set, and our acupressure is in the green. If we had the old hydraulic or the old uh, acupressure system, so without the ABCU, um, the alternating braking uh, control unit, or alternate braking control unit, uh, we would do a brake check, um, or well, not a brake check, but a uh, acupressure check, but uh, we don't need to do that because the computer actually tells us if something is wrong with it which is very handy. We would check our emergency equipment all on board, but we're going to skip that for now. And we can do the overhead scan. We should start boarding now. So we'll go ahead and do so. So wrong app. And we load real time. Crew supply, ground control, DVR test. Faults are normal, set this to captain, one, two, and three. Nine, nine, nine. 
on bad light extinguishers strobe system one because it's an even day people signs do not come on yet restore refueling the rest is checked everything looks good here this stays on normal pack stay on or auto um, we're gonna turn these down like just a notch and that looks good okay go to elec doing battery check turn them off verify that they indicate off which they do turn them back on verify that the charging cycle begins we have 60 amps below uh, and decreasing um, before 10 seconds or, or within 10 seconds and that's checked batteries are still charging a little bit um that's fine but it is depleting which means the average is depleting which means the uh charging cycle um or the the charge of the batteries are slowly increasing which is good fun fact i actually do uh repair batteries <laughs> uh aircraft batteries i actually do that in real life all right so fuel pumps stay off we're still refueling so that's checked um, and we're boarding. Once boarding and refueling is complete, we can turn them on. Uh, that'll take um, about 26 minutes, so. Engine fire test. At least the batter main batteries are one of many things I repair. Um, just, just an FOI. Engine number two looks good as well. The rest here looks good. We're gonna set this to the 12 o'clock position. We don't have any special cargo where we might need to cool down a little bit or not. Or not. Yay, we'll set the 12 to one o'clock position and the Maintenance panel looks clear. Circuit breakers look good as well. And, uh, yep, perfect. Okay. Go down here. Um, this looks good. Man, it's been a while since I've flown with the uh, ISIS uh, in the Phoenix. <laughs> Pretty much every configuration still has the old analog systems. Um, but it's kind of funky, but hey. Okay, that's checked. We'll reset this. Time UTC 1634 is checked and our date 52722 is checked as well. This is a GPS and the rest is all fine as well. All right, heading down here, set this to interphone, VHF1, VHF2. Um, we'll open the cargo door and what you actually would do is do a light test. It's not simulator, you would do a light test here verify that the open and the fault lights here illuminate, which they don't because it's not simulated. You would also check that the three channels here, or not the channels, that the uh, three um, lock mechanism lights illuminate. I don't know why we have two. We should, there's only normally one. We only need one for one door. I'm not sure why they have two installed. Um, you would check these three lights as well. Um, if these two lights were to illuminate, that would not be good. Uh, you wouldn't want that, but these three lights are fine. Um, um, but that Again, not simulated, so we would actually, I actually skip this part, and then you would also check that the door, when you open the door, that the open light illuminates, which it does. Uh, technically, I mean, in the real world, it would. Here, it does not, so. But that's okay. Next, we head here. Since we initialized the FMCDU earlier, pressurization should be, have. we should have a landing elevation set, because we have auto, which should be our, um, should be for Reykjavik, 150 feet, checks out. Camel altitude should be close to our current field elevation um i'm not sure why that's always why it always is a bit lower than that especially since our alpha valve is open i find that a bit weird not sure if that's a bug or if there's something i missed um but yeah something i noticed these are all normal and the status and op systems are fine we're still aligning the irs's uh let me just verify that or my fsu ipc is all set up as well it is perfect both servers are idle master switches, we all checked that, rudder trim zero, all that is checked. And the first officer can do whatever he wants with his stuff. We'll set this to auto, all, and um, that is checked. Alright, up to the MCDU. And we're going to start with the IRS in it. Um, because it is a longer flight, it is always advised. Um, it is three hours, the general rule of thumb is three hours or longer. You would want to have your reference, IRS, uh, or your reference to be your GPS position or your gate so we did have we did pin a i'm not going to show you this now but i did pin a coordinates chart basically for our gate if we were to look at that um we're at gate 53 sometimes in the real world uh you would also see the coordinates below the gate number in this case you don't see that um some airports some developers actually implement that some don't and that's probably because some airports don't even have it in the real world so that's fine um 
So I said gate 53, that is coordinates 5195, so exactly what our GPS is saying. That's why you can normally always trust the GPS. And um, longitude, longitude is 106. That is also checked. Oh. Perfect. We align our ref, confirm alignment, and we'll return. Flight number is easy. 222 Alpha. Our cost of next is, I think, a whopping 53. And uh, you know what? I think you guys might be interested in seeing what I do. So let me just get my iPad up. All right? What up? Here we go. So there you saw the coordinates, 854. Um, so let's get our flight plan out. Perfect. Our cost index is 53, like I said. Perfect. Very high CG. Uh, yeah, CI, I'm my, on my bad. And cruise level initially is 340. We're planning with a, uh, a step climb of 360 later on, which is nice. So we can program a step climb in as well. It's something you would do in the cruise. Um, I'm going to go ahead and program it a little bit earlier. Um, so our the outside ground temperature is 20 degrees. That we'll put as at minus 46. And we'll plug that in. IRS, or in at B, and we should get our preliminary load sheet, or we should have gotten it. Let's check our messages. There it is. Accept. And our zero fuel weight expected 58.7. Plug that in on our block fuel. We're still refueling. Um, we are expecting 13.1. Check that with our flight plan. Our flight plan says. I'm oh, sorry. You don't see the. Uh, you don't see it, do you? My bad. Um, our flight plan also says 13.1. So we'll plug in 13.1. Oops. Plug that in there. And uh, now our alternate fuel. It says that we expect one point. Eight five, so I'm gonna plug in 1.9, and that is checked as well. Takeoff weight 71.6. Our flight plan says 71.57. That's pretty much perfect. And our preliminary load sheet also should say the same. 71.57. So 71.6. That's checked. Perfect. Okay. So we're gonna continue with the flight plan. We're expecting departure runway 26 left for today. Um. Our. Let me just. Bef you know, before I get crazy now. Let me use two six left. Transition level. Perfect. Yep. Okay, two six left. This is I predicted, and our uh, routing is Lamb Six Mike. There she is. Transition none. Insert. And no discontinuities. That's fine. And then ILS Zulu. One nine via Azrun to Kilo via let's check via Elvum plug in Elvum insert and we've got that. Uh, next, we're going to program our alternate flight plan. Uh, so, departure one nine. Let's see, departure one nine. And insert. And then arrival, since we already have the routing in, ILS one. No star. No transition. And the via. No via. Insert. Plug that in as well. So checking our charts, our SID, we're gonna check our SID here. We're gonna put on constraints, flight plan, 10 miles. And so let's step through. So 710 feet. And we've got Delta 258 Bravo, but the restriction of 220 knots between 1500 and 4000 feet so 1500 and above is set that's checked delta echo tango 31 22 that's fine 
two five zero max, four thousand or below, and five thousand feet or acorn. Next waypoint, five thousand, six thousand or lamb and waypoint before that and lamb would be our last. And then we check the flight plan itself. Our flight plan checks out. So, turn this back on. And what we are going to program, well, we don't know anything about in and out because we don't get that kind of information, unfortunately. So I'm just going to program some visual cues um, for our departure because I kind of like doing that. Uh, so, what is that? DME of 2.3. For the probably for localizer it looks like so this yeah whiskey whiskey I'm gonna try that one nautical mile and it wants 2.3 so I'm gonna do I think 2.3 actually does work no okay there was a there is I don't know at a certain I think at a certain range you can actually decimal points um, guess not okay so two miles and the rest is pretty much debt link. Dead lane 31. Really? 31? Dang, okay. And we've got big with 127. Um, Dead link course of 259er. Another debt link, which is our last one we can use for 10.5, so we'll do 11. And then the rest is checked. For RadNav, we're going to plug in debt link on the left and the lamb on the right. We don't have any. Um, don't have any ADFs? We're gonna plug in VOR, the VORs and make sure that they are tuned. That link is a bit far away, so I don't expect that. But Lamb should appear. I'm kind of wondering why that's not the case. Um, one five six. Okay, Lamb is kind of far away too. Maybe they are a bit far away to be received by the. Uh, EDRMI and so on and so forth. Well, we don't have one, but here. Cool. We'll keep it as is. For some reason, I mean, it should still like show up, I think. So, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. So, radio in and B, we'll do a wind request or in its second page. Flaps 1, we said uh, with 1,500 feet above ground, so our elevation is approximately 200 feet, so we're going to go with 1,700 and 1700 and 1700 fix zero 6000 of course what? and checking our departure performance 58 fix 6 8 That's checked. We're not going to set the takeoff trim because we don't have our um, final load sheet yet. So, progress um, in case of return, it will be Echo Golf Kilo Kilo 26 left. And um, for the secondary flight plane, copy the active, plug in the return into Gatwick, ILS 26 left, and go to performance plug in our information here so uh, transition flight level is 70 our winds are 320 at 11 really okay and temperature is um 20 1024 and that's plugged in as well. All right. 
play plan and everything is set. This is all checked and set. Initial climb, we're expecting 6,000. Um, we're going to plug in 6,100 because we didn't get clearance just yet. Um, and we'll do an oxygen test. Obviously, that's all we can really simulate at the moment, so uh, there's no need to do any more. Climb, now blue flight direction 1 and 2, 4,000 feet. Uh, Carry one girl, 2, 4, and well, 2, 2 to check. We can now do the RVSM check, verify that the difference between these two altitudes, if they're both set to the same QNH, is no greater than 75 feet, which is the case. Um, and that's checked. You normally also compare this with the standby instrument. They can have a little bit of a more, more of a deviation, um, but I don't have the figures for that at the moment, so I can't really, I, I have no idea there. I know these two should be within 75 feet on the ground or close to ground level. That's checked. Fueling is completed, boarding is not yet completed, so that means we can turn on the seatbelt signs, but the fuel pumps will stay off for now. And uh, yeah, we are 15 minutes from departure, which means we can now request I for clearance, just as our chart has suggested us to do. Um, so we're on time for that. Aircraft is set up. Let's see if Gatwick Tower gives us, can give us some PDC. The Gatwick approach, maybe? No. Alright, so, one, two, four. I just want to check something. Yeah. So, one, two, four, decimal, two, two, five. One two four two two five. Left hand to one kilo whiskey taxi stand five five eight via Juliet Romeo Lima and Quebec Alpha. And we'll get some I for clearance. Julia Romeo Lima. Yeah, we tower easy triple two alpha stand the five three air bus eight two twenty with off. Requesting I for to Reykjavik, please. Easy two 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 alpha Garrett Tower hello cleared Kesavik Lambom six Mike departure squawk seven seven four zero. Lambton 6 Mike Departure, Squawk 7746 Alpha. Easy is completed, the jetway is going away. We're about 10 minutes from off clock time, which is perfect. We're perfectly on time with everything. We just got I for a clearance. We got our clearance, so Squawk is set. Initial climb has been updated. Or our flight plan has been double checked to make sure that's the cor uh, correct SID, which it is. And uh, in the meantime, we're also filling out the uh, p paperwork. So um, we'll get that going as well very soon. Um, and now we will do a takeoff briefing. So uh, I I'm very, I'm very bad at this. So don't, please don't be mad at me, but we're going to try. So we're an aircraft A320-200 with CFM engines. So nothing special there. We don't have any special configuration to the aircraft, which means uh, we should um, we don't have to uh, go with any special procedures or flight plan. Our uh, RSID is the Lamb 6 Mike, which is a very simple RNAV departure. We're departing out of runway 26 left, doing a right turn, and uh, just following the SID as follows up to 6,000 feet until 86 clears out. Uh, tower will then put us over to departure frequency, in this case approach, um, so we do not do that automatically. And, um, once we contact approach, we're supposed to let them know our SID uh, designator, as well as our aircraft type and our cleared altitude. Checking the rad now, we do have Detlink and LAM uh, tuned in. Nothing required for our departure, but just in case we need some extra uh, information, we've got that in. We have the uh, 26 left tuned back for in case of a return, and uh, our cruise level is 340 and our optimum says 330, recommended at max is 364, um, which is all within limits, so we're fine there. Performance or preliminary performance says flaps 1 with a flex of 58. Uh, noise abatement departs procedure two, so that's why we have 1,700 feet on thrust reduction, acceleration, and um, engine out acceleration. Transition altitude is 6,000 feet. Um, fuel prediction. 
time, approximately two hours and 42 minutes with an extra fuel of 5.1 tons we're expecting. Um, we'll take a gross weight of 71.8 and an extra of 1.8, uh, so which is 55 minutes. We're right there. Secondary flight plan, we have secondary flight plan just for the return. Um, no other reasons for that. In case of a engine failure, uh, we will just fly around my heading and uh, contact ABC. We'll first fly um, the aircraft, get everything, get the aircraft safe, continue runway my heading, and then contact ABC as necessary. Um, and then follow the secondary flight plan, um, which is why we have the 26 left for our return. And all that is good. For a safety demonstration, I'm not very good at that. Just know that. For any caution, um, we will only reject um, below 100 knots. After 100 knots, we will reject to take off for any warning or anything that makes the aircraft unsafe to take into the air. And after we one, we have to take the aircraft into the air. And we will deal with the aircraft, we'll clean up the aircraft as necessary and deal with any problems in the air as we require and then contact ADC if necessary. That is our departure briefing. We can now do the before start checklist. So logbook security checked, checked and entered. Departure briefing is completed. Cockpit preparation is completed. Cam signs are on, auto and armed. Adiers are nav and we check, double check that here. The nav and the distances are checked. Fuel is set at 10.3 tons, or sorry, 13.1 tons is checked and balanced. We have some fuel in the center tanks as well, so that is checked as well. Uh, bear ref 1024 set on 123 and parking brake is set, checked and checked. Before start checklist above line is completed. At this point, we're just waiting for the load sheet to arrive. Hopefully that will come very soon. We'll receive messages. Reporting completed, thank you. And we're gonna start the APU at this point. So master switch coming on. We can also, since reporting is complete, we can now turn on the fuel pumps. And we'll wait for the flap open indication to pop up and then start the APU. There it is. Sort the APU. Uh, it seems to not be coming in, so I'm going to resend the load sheet. I'm not sure if it's a bug or something when you're in that menu. But we're going to accept this. APU is available, so APU bleed on, external power off, and we're going to get rid of the external power. Um, on services, APU, so our zero fuel weight is 58.5, we're so a little bit lighter today, um, or was it 6, 6, decimal 6, uh, and 30.5, plug that in, take off weight 71.5, 27.3, so 27.3 if we check here 27.3 that's approximately up I would say up uh, 0 0.3 so we'll check for something in that range um, and that is good to go so let's do our calculations our final performance calculations so optimum 26 left NTS off off final load sheet sync 71.5 27 go with temperature don't like how you can not edit. Oh, now you can. Okay, so 22 and 1023. We're going to plan with that and calculate. So up 0 0.3 is perfect. Let's plug that in. It's like this 59, 55, 57. Version 6 to 8, hold down for one. Okay, I just... 59, 5, 5... And uh, performance calculations are complete. Flight plan is set. And uh, we are ready to GO. Beacon light comes on. 
and connect the tug. Or it's a little bit laggy, I'm not sure why. I think it has to do with the vats and uh, stuff. So, AQ pressure in the green, tow service idle, everything is checked. And we are good to go, slides are armed. We will now connect the tug and we'll see the nose wheel and disengage in indication of pier. Oh. Easy 222 two, two, Alpha, stand 5 3, push and start up, first face east. Push and start approved, facing east, 4 trouble to Alpha. Uh, that was on, uh, okay, right, was that 1594? Well, break and release, and let's get out of here. Bog now, 1, exit, uh, exit. So, ignition, bed extra power up, we got a pressure, engine number 2, let's go. I know easy normally starts engine 1 first, but um, I'm going by the airline I know best. Well, pretty much most airlines start engine number 2 first on the uh, AT-20. Grand Kilo, speed bed 24 kilo whiskey, at stand 48 Romeo, with information goal, there is to copy I-5 clearance to Frankfurt, please. And then 2 should be stabilized, so we're looking for 2464, 2464, um, that's checked. It should be available, there it is. So, we don't need anti-ice. Laps 1, up 0 0.3. Flight control check, full up. Pull down, neutral, pull left, pull right, neutral, rudder, pull left, pull right, neutral, auto brake max, and we're ready to go. 225 easy, 851. Easy, triple to alpha, ready for taxi. 222 Alpha, taxi holding point Alpha 3, runway 26 left via Papa and Alpha November. Taxi holding point Alpha 3, runway 26 left via Papa and Alpha November for Triple 2 Alpha. After start checklist, anti ice is off, pitch trim 0 point down set, rudder uh, 0 point down, uh, sorry, 0 point 3 up set, which is 27%. And ecom status is checked. Rudder trim zero. Ecom status is checked. Well, let's get out of here. We're taxiing via Papa Alpha November Alpha Three. Eastern Info Hotel current Six five Billy Yankee, Gatwick Ground, hello, you can taxi. Zero eight left Romeo, hold short of Lima, expect stand four seven. Zero eight left Romeo, hold short Lima, and expect oh, stand break four check. seven. Break check, pressure zero. Yankee. We're going to turn right here. Okay, speeds and everything stay the same. We're just going to plug in the shift to 100. And so that's good. We're ready for the intersection departure. Okay, to land 26 left, easy 26 Bravo. Alright, nothing changed, departure briefing is fine, so before takeoff checks above the line, takeoff briefing completed, flight controls are checked, flight instruments are checked, flaps 1 plus F planned, 1 plus F set, you come out with takeoff no blue.
Alright, planning up runway 26 left for Triple to Alpha and we'll have it inside for Triple to Alpha, thank you. Cam Cruises for departure. Tower, very good evening. Eight miles. 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 Bravo, what's the Gatwick taxi? Second right Juliet, contact ground 121 decimal 8, bye bye. Second right Juliet, contact ground 121 decimal 8, cheers, bye bye. Two for takeoff, no delay, traffic four miles. Good for takeoff, one way, uh, two six left, no delay for trip to Alpha. Get out of here. 80%. EGA 67 behind the landing, EGA 320 near, so I might one line up two six left behind. Yeah, landing 320 near, line up away behind, EGA 867. It's like this first, one way, auto thrust blue. I'll do it in a second. Six eight two five. Think you have a good one. Triple two alpha. Okay, Shannon, five one one seven. Turn left, heading two nine zero zero degrees. When established from the localizer, runway two six left. He's then on the glide path. Uh, left now, two nine zero degrees. I'm just on the glide path. Uh, two six left, dial left. Shannon, five one one seven. Five eight three four speed one six zero knots or greater until four DME. One six zero knots until four DME. Situation for Delta turn left heading three five zero degrees set off to three south three. Turn left heading three five zero degrees three thousand feet. Situation for Delta speed one eight zero knots or less. Right, Yavik approach, easy trouble to Alpha, Lamptons, takes Mike, oh, departure uh, 4,000 feet. Easy 2 to 2 Alpha, get out direct to hello, climb now, flight level 190. Climb now, flight level 190 for trouble to Alpha. Hermes 011, route direct Drake. Route direct Drake, Hermes 011. 065 is correct, okay. Turn right, heading 350 degrees. 350 degrees, okay. 5834, contact Gary Tower now, 124 decimal 2, 2, 5, 5. 2, 5, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2
Leaf Pepper heading 350, American 2-2. Shannon, Vice 117, contact Garrett, Tower now, 1 Center set after takeoff to the Thanks, Garrett, Five one seven. feet. American 2 2 3 4 track miles to center altitude 6,000 feet, QNH 1024. Down to 6,000, QNH 1024, American 2 2. Reaching 10,000 feet, so we're going to turn on the landing lights. The build sign should have been on at 20,000 feet, but um, I didn't get to do it. Do it. Landing system one and two. First officer would also turn it on, but we're going to leave it for him. We'll probably see the flash later, so we're going to turn it on for him as well. We're going to set the tray tables. We've got everything tuned in. Just going to double check everything here. That's all that we checked. Okay, for performance. Um, Gonna adjust the radar a little bit, and that was all we need to really need to do for 10,000 feet for now. Four is set. We'll do the approach checklist. Approach briefing is completed. Ecom status is checked. Barrow is one zero two four set, and MBA is uh, three six one feet set as well. People signs are on, and auto break is medium. We plan with uh, medium auto break and reverse idle. Um, even though it is, <laughs> even though it is still very light outside, um, it is uh, it is kind of late. So we, uh, what I did is I planned with 
uh, idle reverse to reduce noise and so we're just gonna um, use a medium auto brake we also have a brake fan so we can definitely afford to do so um, so uh, that's definitely not a problem if we didn't have the auto uh, sorry did I say auto brake I meant brake fan if we didn't have an auto brake fan I would probably consider some different things um, but uh, that's uh, that's not the case so that's all good is that our airport over there yep there's our airport that's our runway program ah, actually we have to put in the uh, range the range of 10 there we go and I would like to do it. decelerate thousand Ops 2. down, pullers armed, laps three. We're clear to land. So that comes on. And flaps full.
All right, landing checklist. Camden signal given. Auto throttle speed. Landing gear down. Three green. You can move on blue. And proceeds for departure. Uh, arrival. My bad. <laughs> All right, let's take this bird in. So. Unfortunately, there's no keybind for disconnecting auto thrust that I've found so far. I've tried them all, at least through FSU IPC, um, so I couldn't find anything. But we do have one for autopilot, so that's good. Oh, my airplane. Get this plane on the ground, shall we? A little bit of a wind from the left, but only five knots, so perfectly fine. Nothing to worry about, unless it uh, they are variable the winds um, according to the uh, METAR. So we're just gonna look out for that. Five hundred. and disarm the auto brake and take our next exit to the right. At any rate, it was minus 178. to Reykjavik. After landing checklist, lots are retracted. Landing lights are off, spoilers are disarmed, radar and predictive winter system is off. Do you guys stand by? And APU is currently off. We'll start it in just a moment. Unfortunately, no VGDS simulation. Very unfortunate. We will have to go outside. 
exactly know what part. I mean, I can pass your perfect center line, but I don't know when to stop. I just can't judge that very well. Where's my take? Here we go. Break and break set. And APU is available, so engine 1 and 2 cut. Verify they're shutting down. Perfect. Seatbelt signs come off. Emergency exit lights. APU bleed on. Fuel pumps off. And at 10% or below, there we go. Beacon can come off. Turn the brake fans back on. And we'll start to deboard. Take a look at the wheels real quick. They seem to cool down really fast in this airplane. I'm not sure if that's realistic or not. Um, but we can turn off the brake fan now. And we got a company message, so we're gonna quickly take a look at that, and then we're gonna do the parking checklist. Here we go. 2224 Zulu. That means we are actually, I think, even early, so. Welcome to Reykjavik. And let's do the parking checklist. Parking brakes and shocks on and in. Engines are off. Beacon is off. Seatbelt signs are off. Emergency AC lights are off. The little electric pump is off. And the fuel pumps are off. We're going to turn on the ASR power to help the APU out a little bit. And uh, that is the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this flight with the Phoenix Airbus A320. Um, I surely enjoyed flying it. And uh, this was the longest flight I've ever done with the airplane so far. I'm sure there are plenty more flights that are longer than this. Uh, this flight took exactly three hours as we saw. Flight time at least. So that's pretty crazy. But uh, yeah. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you did, let me know. And uh, we'll see you all in the very next video. Until then, have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day. And peace!